These unprecedented times made for an unusual speech from the throne. The pandemic changed the look of today's ceremony and its message. This is our generation's crossroads. This is the opportunity to contain the global crisis and build back better together. But tonight, another rare moment, an address to the nation and a direct Bonjour. appeal to Canadians from the Prime Minister. Canadians. The second wave isn't just starting, it's already underway. It's all too likely we won't be gathering for Thanksgiving, but we still have a shot at Christmas. So was today's messaging enough for this minority government to win the confidence of the House and of Canadians? Let's bring in at issue for a special Wednesday panel, Chantal Hébert, Andrew Coyne, and Althea Raj. Let, let's start with the throne speech. Uh, we talked about last, last week how the government had been tempering expectations a little bit. What did you make of the plan put forward today, Andrew? Did, did it make sense in terms of its response to the pandemic and as explanation for why Parliament was prorogued in the first place? Well, it, it, to give them their credit, I suppose, they've gone, they've gone back, I think, ultimately to where they were talking about four weeks ago. That is to say, this very ambitious plan that they had of, of bringing in all kinds of policies that they've always wanted to implement anyway and stuffing them into a, 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 a sack called pandemic. They've taken note of some of the response that they've had from that, and so they've wrapped it in this profession of concern for dealing with the pandemic. Uh, and they, to, to ward off charges that maybe they've got different priorities in the publics. And they've also inserted some language about, oh, of course, we'll be fiscally responsible to mm -hmm. sort of uh, chill some of the concerns that they had. We don't care about the deficit. But uh, at its core, it's pretty much the same ideology they were talking about four weeks ago. And if I didn't think that before your interview with Chris Chickreel, and I certainly think it now, uh, she really didn't seem to think this was really much of an issue. Well, they certainly don't seem to be too worried about the spending. We know that the deficit's $340 billion and, and tilting quickly towards $400 billion, uh, Chantal. And, and maybe that isn't something people should be worried about. Maybe it's not something Canadians are worried about. But when you see all the programs that they plan to create, that's going to cost money, too. Yes, well, plan to create is really the buzzword here rather than uh, uh, shovel in the ground and boots uh, on the ground. So. First, I think the, the real test on, on fiscal prudence or, or restraint is uh, going to come when there is a fiscal update. Yeah. Uh, today was not the day uh, to speak about austerity. Second, I'm not so sure that most Canadians at this point would uh, take seriously or would find that the government did talk to them about austerity as they are ex still in a crisis, yes. uh, would have felt that the government was really connecting with their reality. So it, it is what it is. I don't see this as a plan for the next 10 years. I'm not, uh, I suspect the government, bottom line, would probably like to go in an election, not this fall, but at some point before it does have to make hard decisions to restore some fiscal balance to uh, the public finances. What do you think, Althea? What, did, did the throne speech deliver on trying to reset the government and, and respond to some of the, the, the issues that are out there now and that have emerged through the pandemic? Well, time will tell if it really uh, fulfilled the, the mission of doing the reset. Because, of course, back in August, we were talking about We Charity and the Liberals, uh, quote-unquote, scandals, uh, the Prime Minister's chief, of, the husband of the Prime Minister's chief of staff, who uh, was cleared, actually, today uh, amidst uh, all the other news. Um, so if parliamentarians start talking about the speech from the Chrome and the Liberal government's agenda rather than mm -hmm. ethics and scandals, then the, I guess, the mission accomplished. Um, this throne speech, I, I would disagree with Andrew. I, I don't think it's as ambitious as the Prime Minister was telegraphing back in August when he pulled the plug on Parliament. Back then, and even in the spring, we were talking about um, things like help for vulnerable workers. There was some vague language around that uh, in this speech from the throne, but nothing uh, concrete. Uh, it is mostly filled with items that the Liberals have long promised and long said that they wanted to do, including a lot of the stuff that was in the speech from the throne last year, like pharmacare that mm -hmm. is in this speech from the throne. Um, and time will tell whether they're actually going to implement them, because I agree with Chantal. A lot of these things are, we're going to talk to the provinces about doing X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And, you know, even if the NDP gives them a three-year mandate or three years left to their mandate, they would not be able to accomplish everything they set out to do with this throne speech. No. Chantal, you want in there, and then I'll go to Andrew. Yep. 
Uh, yeah, two points. Take childcare. Well, we've had federal governments talk about investing in childcare and creating a, a national system along the lines of the Quebec system. That actually uh, is a public policy that is of interest and probably valuable to many people, but it is not something you're going to put in place with it between now and the end of this year or, or even a year from now. Take pharmacare. Mm -hmm. The language hasn't cha changed. Yeah. Uh, yes, they're doubling down on pharmacare or on their contention that they will go forward with the provinces that want to go forward with them. That excludes Quebec, Ontario, I suspect BC and Alberta. So <laughs> we're, uh, yes, uh, some way from that national pharmacare program. BC be and Quebec because they have programs. Yes, yes. Uh, and Ontario and Alberta have made it clear they're not buying in. So. It's like saying I'm going to go to the school dance and I'm going to dance with whoever wants to dance with me, except that no one is actually really interested in that dance. <laughs> uh, last point to you, Andrew, and then I want to switch to the opposition response. There's a lot of language in there about working with the provinces, more yeah. than perhaps even usual for these speeches. Uh, it, it puts it, it, the provinces in the in, unusual position, I suppose, of being the guardians of, of fiscal probity. That if anything's going to prevent this government from really blowing the bank open, it's going to be that they won't be able to get the provinces to go along with them. Okay, let, let's talk a little bit about the opposition response, because this all will result in a confidence vote. Uh, let me play you a little bit of what Aaron O'Toole and Jagmeet Singh had to, day, had to say after tonight's primetime address by the Prime Minister. Mr. Trudeau says we're all in this together, but Canada has never been more divided. We must show our fellow Canadians that we value them and respect their contributions to our country. We need to do better to take care of each other, a better social security, social safety net. And it's not good enough to just say the words. We need to actually see the actions. The Conservatives have said they're, they're not going to vote for this. It doesn't sound like the bloc is either, given what their demands are. Uh, so that leaves Jagmeet Singh. But, but give me your sense of, of the response the, to, the, to, the, to the political message uh, today from, from the Prime Minister. Althea, I'll start with you. Uh, not very surprising. The bloc leader has actually said that um, he doesn't think he's going to vote for it, but he's going to give the prime minister like a week to change his mind. Um, the <laughs> NTV came out and said that the two things that they had said and spoken to the prime minister about last week, Jagmeet Singh, uh, during his phone call with the prime minister, that they want to make sure that uh, Canadians who are receiving CERB uh, are still taken care of before this new employment insurance program kicks in, and they want sick leave. Um, now, these are actually two things that the Liberals have communicated that they plan to do. But for some reason, it wasn't in the throne speech. Like, to me, actually, I would have thought that they would have wanted to say, we're yeah. doing sick leave and we're actually talking to the provinces about it. We've even included it in our safe restart program yeah. Yeah. because Canadians, I think, are worried about, like, if my shift at McDonald's, I can't go because my kid's sick. Like, can I have some sick leave? Um, but... So really, the only option the liberals, the liberals, the NDP say is if it's going to be tabled uh, as legislation, then the, they will vote for it and they will say yeah. that that is a signal. But everybody, of course, thinks that the NDP now has a very weak hand and, of course, is going to uh, vote in favor of the speech from the throne. And there is no reason yeah. why yeah. they wouldn't vote for the speech from the throne. Okay. Everything they want is in this speech. Andrew, Andrew, and then Chantal, Andrew. Uh, well, just first of all, on, on Aaron O'Toole's comment about the country never being more divided, obviously that's a little bit over the top rhetorically, but he's taking stick in certain quarters for even mentioning this, that there are in fact deep divisions within the country that predate the pandemic that have not yes. gone away. Yeah. But there were some people saying, oh, how dare he talk about how we're not just all united in, in this fight? Well, we're united on some things, but not on some others. Mm -hmm. And in a throne speech that's as wide ranging as this, uh, it is remarkable that there was basically nothing intended to address any of those divisions and concerns and alienation in the West in particular. And, and they were, and so they were in the throne speech nine months ago, those exact comments, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. I don't think it's out of line for the opposition to oppose and to raise some of these concerns. Uh, I don't think he had as, as good a day as, as Jagmeet Singh did, because Jagmeet Singh is in a different position. He is sure. in, in, a, in a situation where people are paying a lot of attention to the NDP right now, where they don't necessarily always do. Uh, and he's trying to maximize whatever leverage he's got uh, to try and at least claim he got something uh, something for his vote, which eventually, I think, will be to vote with the government. But yeah. um, I, he's, he's basically saying to the government, throw me a bone here. Uh, Chantal, your thoughts on that? Uh, uh, I think he's not even saying, throw me a bone. He's saying that bone that you are, already have, can you please put it out there? 
and I expect to see some of the things the NDP is asking today in legislation uh, rather than Trump speech language sooner rather than later, uh, as in within the next few weeks. So um, I'm not getting my suitcase ready. Well, where would I go to cover my <laughs> I was gonna, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Buy more masks. Uh, yeah. probably is what I would be doing if I believed there was an election coming. That being said, um, and it's hard for someone who covered the referendum to buy the line that the country has never been as divided as mm. Aaron O'Toole maintains. Uh, it's really uh, the overstatement kills what would otherwise be a valid point. I think, though, that Jagmeet Singh had the better day, not because he mm. has a bit of leverage, uh, but because he was talking about real things. Uh, yeah. that people worry about sick leave uh, and what are they going to do when the, their SORB expires if right. their uh, job situation is still up in the air. So up to a point, uh, he won the day on the opposition benches by being real. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you for being here throughout the day and into the night. I appreciate it. And I'll see you back here next Thursday. Bye-bye.